All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Nick Thompson, and I'm actually from Dallas, Texas. So thank you for having me. I'm pretty excited to be here. Um, I work for LionGraph, and we're a data analytics and business intelligence agency. And I'm here to talk about how we believe that data visualizations are not just as, um, peripheral, but are essential. And for software to be truly effective, you need good data visualizations. So a couple of points I'm gonna cover is that numbers tell stories, numbers are powerful, and that numbers are also very practical. So when you're younger, you're taught numbers and letters. On one side, you have your numbers, on the other side, you have your letters. And the older you get, the paths tend to diverge more and more until you're older and you're choosing a career, and you basically, this is extreme, but choose a career path in one or the other, numbers or letters. Uh, you're an engineer or you're a lawyer. However, in data visualizations, the two are not separate extremes, but are just two different sides of the same coin. Numbers, just like letters, can tell stories, can communicate meaning, and provide powerful insight. Data is telling stories, and is telling stories all around us all the time, if we just have the chance to look. It can be just as exciting as your favorite movie, as compelling as a piece of art, or exciting as your favorite book. Data is just like a story and should have all the same components of any good story. In a good story, you have exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, resolution. And this is just a simple picture to show that a line graph can follow the same storylines of any good story that you love. Now this picture is personal favorite because one, I'm a sports fan, and it tells a pretty interesting story for one team. As you can see that they, this team started as potential sixth seed, but then it ends with them below making the playoffs. It's a heartbreaking story, but it's a story that you can see in one picture. You can see the rise and the fall. You can see that something happened around midseason. We don't know what, but it's compelling. It draws us in. We want to know what happened. It's the story of LeBron and the Lakers. <laughs> Luckily, your Thunder had a better year, so they ended up a little better than the Lakers. But it's compelling. This is also a personal favorite of mine, and it is considered and often thought to be one of the first data positions ever made. It was drafted in 1892 by Charles Menard, and it's the story of Napoleon and his campaign into Russia. Now, it demonstrates a very drastic picture of this campaign that took place in 1812. So in 1812, Napoleon marched on Moscow to order to conquer the city and is believed to have started with at least 470,000 troops. He returned with only 10. So this picture demonstrates the out and back journey of that campaign. The tan line represents the journey towards Moscow and the black back towards France. And the width of the line represents the number of soldiers he had as he went. And you can see that when he returned, that line is pretty thin. Also at the bottom is a very simple temperature graph which details the rapidly dropping temperature the closer they got to Moscow. This, pic this picture is telling a very dramatic and costly story in human lives, but also a significant moment in history. Data is telling stories all around us. So it begs the question, how many stories go untold? Because numbers are powerful. They have the ability to move us, to incite something in us, if only they are told. So in stories, you have quests, you have basic plots, you have underdogs, tragedies, all that can be communicated through numbers. You have one ring to rule them all. You have a 16 seed beats the one, 9-11. Numbers are telling stories, and they're powerful. But they also drive decisions and are very practical. So a common question in a business may be, which region has the most revenue? This is gonna be a pretty common question. And so where do people go to find the answer to this? They go to spreadsheets. Now, I'm not dogging spreadsheets. I'm in spreadsheets almost every day. But this is cumbersome. You can find the answers to your questions, but it's not always easy. You have to look and look and you'll get your answer, but you probably aren't gonna ask any more questions after that. So what if instead of this, you had this. It's communicating information quickly, it answers your question, and it kind of inspired you to want to ask more questions because of how quickly you came to the answer. So, we asked one question, and one question is just the beginning of a business. So we find that business equals decisions. 
And business is just a series of decisions. It's buy this, sell that, do this. But oftentimes, finding the answers to the questions you're asking is hard because it's buried in software or it's buried in spreadsheets. And so what happens? Business is still moving. It moves quickly, and you need answers to questions. So you're going to make decisions based off all the information you have, good, bad, or none at all. So what happens? When finding answers is hard, most people commonly stop asking questions. So if it's so essential and it's so important and business equals decisions, why aren't more people using data visualizations to drive their business? Why are people not asking more and more questions? Well, at LineGraph we found that it's often difficult because building essential, meaningful, power visualizations that communicate everything you're trying to say can be hard. A good visualization needs all of these four elements to, in order to be effective. Now technology is probably, we all recognize that that's pretty important. You need it to collect the data, to gather the data, and then you also need good technology in order to manipulate it and present the data in an effective visualization. Business is also probably pretty common to most of us and it makes sense. It needs to make business sense. It needs to use good business acumen. It needs to communicate effectively to your stakeholders. But the last two elements are probably over, either overlooked or often forgotten in building a good effective visualizations. Design is essential. You may have the best technology, you may make great business sense, but if it's ugly, no one wants to look at it and no one cares. It's like a user interface. If the user interface isn't good, no one's gonna look at it or use it. Storytelling. We've talked about storytelling and how numbers can tell stories. But if you're telling a story that no one cares about, that isn't meaningful, your visualization falls apart. However, when you combine all of these four elements, you combine technology, business, design, and storytelling, you can begin to build effective and beautiful visualizations that provide insight into companies that give you the best information to drive the best decisions. That's why work that matters deserves to be measured. When we begin to see our technology, our software, and our databases as repositories of stories, we begin to appreciate the products themselves and also the people behind them. So thank you very much, and I'd love to take any questions. Absolutely. Um, that can often happen. We find the most important thing is at the beginning, instead of asking questions after, you got to ask the right questions at the beginning. So what are you trying to do? What matters to you as the client? And so in order to avoid building something that we think is amazing, that does all these great things, but ultimately pr provides no real value, you've wasted everyone's time. And so the most important thing that we found in building great visualizations that companies are using, that's providing insight, that's helping them cut costs, is asking the right questions early, going deep. What matters to you? What do you want to know? Oftentimes we found, though, that some people don't even know where to begin because they've never looked at anything. And so that's where it comes to the person building it, has to be able to ask the right questions and manipulate the data in a way that makes sense to them.